monsters it's Allison here and I have the privilege of kicking off this month with um, my layout of the very first prompt so the prompt today is to um, tell us about your average day what goes on what does your day look like and I wanted to do something a bit special so I have created um, a cut file and my hope is as I put this together it will sort of resemble a clock so let me show you the cut file. So I sort of had this idea of making a clock to show uh, what my day is like as it goes around kind of thing. And, and obviously every day is slightly different, but there are certain things that happen way too frequently in my house. So um, along with my cut file, I've got a couple of pieces of um, Simple Stories paper. This is from the So Fancy line and this cloud pattern from Carpe Diem. In my mind right now, I'm thinking I'm going to cut out some of these clouds and decorate the back of this. I initially thought I would do something like that, but the cut file is going to get lost on that. So I changed my mind, going with something a little more neutral. Um, oh, in case you're wondering, because I hate it when people show me um, one side and not the other. That's the other side of that one. It's like little triangle patterns. And that's the other side of that one, which is equally as lovely and it's going to be very hard to cut this apart, but I will. I've also got some 3x4 journaling cards. Uh, mostly, I think, from the Carpe Diem line. There might be some from... Oh, what is it called? Like Colorful Life or something like that. Um, I have a plan to use some of those. And then I have my photos. And these are all printed off at 3x4. And they're just sort of everyday life type shots. And my plan, I hope it works because it's on camera now. And if it doesn't work, I'm in trouble. Um, is to use some of my uh, metal dies to cut these photos into circles and back them behind these. I haven't pulled out any other supplies at the moment. Um, I think it's going to take me a little bit of time to get this sort of set up the way I want it and then I can start adding some um, numbers to indicate which hours these happen and I, if I have any spots left over I can cut some of these into circles you know, that'd be great, the rise and shine. Or I can just cut that out, fussy cut it out, and use it as an embellishment. So that is my plan. Uh, first order of business is to find a circle die that will fit. And I did not pre-plan this, so it could go quite wrong. Let's hope it doesn't. I keep all my um, thin wafer dies in this old Stampin' Up! Um, case like all their wooden stamps came in plastic cases like this so um I can't remember what happened to the wooden stamp maybe I got rid of it or maybe I'm happy to have it laying loose um but now I have this case and ooh, that's gonna be perfect and that's what I keep all my sort of wafer thin dies and just keeps them all nicely contained all right, I'm just going to double check that that is actually going to fit. Yes. I love it when a plan comes into, into fruition. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut my photos and start sort of placing them. And I'll cut off the branding strip of this and I will hit you back when I'm ready. Okay, so I've got all my photos cut out and I've sort of um, loosely placed them where they need to go um, according to sort of the the clock idea and um, I have fussy cut out some of those clouds it's a little painful to cut into that beautiful paper but I did it I did it anyways um, this one came from a 3x4 card and I wanted to keep the notes and get as much of the lined um, print as possible and my circle didn't sort of get both of them in so I cut this one out with a small circle and then cut this one out with a larger one getting as many of the uh, as much as the lined design as I could and then I'm just planning to do that and no one will ever know except you and I because you've seen it now that there is a cut out of that circle. Um, I had one other photo but it, it didn't really 
fit. And it was of these two, and I already have these two in um, on this layout. So I actually cut a um, one of those. <laughs> Sorry, my my part. Uh, brain fart. Um, I actually cut one of those three by four cards and I'm going to use that instead. We'll probably place it on top of the circle just because I want to make sure that you can read it properly and underneath, I don't know if you noticed that, but it sort of cuts off the T and the L a little bit too much. So this one will probably go on top. So now it comes a matter of adhering all these photos to my lovely circle here. And I think it's gonna be easiest for me to use some liquid adhesive. And I'm probably gonna use my Zig glue pen. All right, so I'm gonna hear all these down. Let's see if I can do one for you on camera without making a giant mess of absolutely everything. Randomly pick a circle. This will also tell me if this glue pen is going to be strong enough. Oh, maybe I should figure out exactly where that, how that needs to be oriented. Oh, let's get the right one. work. All right, so I'll go ahead and keep sticking on my photos. See you in a bit. All right, all my photos are adhered and now it's time to adhere this to the back or to the background. So I'm I'm going to use a combination of adhesives here. I've got my tape runner that will help adhere the photos in place. And then if they're not um, fully Oopsies, adhere to the circles and I can sort of fix that. And for the outer edge, I'm going to use um, tacky glue. It's sort of my new favorite friend. If it squeezes out, you can easily wipe it off so you don't get it anywhere that you don't want it. And it dries matte, not glossy. And there's a whole lot. A whole heck of a lot more in the bottle than in something like glossy accents for a lot less so let's get this oriented correctly and sort of centered and this one is a the problem more damage than I'm fixing so I might just have to hide that another way I've got to adhere that let's get my glue pen back I just need a couple of dots here because I am gonna put that oops wrong glue pen what happens when you have too many tools in your arsenal? Pick up the wrong thing. And I wanted to put this in there. I'm just going to use my tape runner. And that way I can make sure it's centered. And the tape runner will help it adhere the um, cup file down. That is really bothering me. Okay, so now I can start adding in my other items. Um, I think I will actually take a moment to put ink around the edges of these clouds and the other um, uh, journaling cards that I cut into circles. Okay. 
So now that's all inked, I can sort of start playing with placement and see where I want these. It's going to be a little tricky for me to pull this up now that I've glued everything down because of course, you know, I like to do things backwards. It's no problem. But I'm okay with overlapping some things. This should lift right up. have some in the middle. Possibly. raise that one up with some pop dots. Just give a bit of definition on the other. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. My thinking is I've got the, um, the bold black and white stripe up here and down here and sort of helps bring the eye across the layout. I could do it the other way, I suppose. That might be better. Because you, you read, you, your eyes naturally read a page from your top left here and then they sort of do this kind of a thing until they get to the bottom right, because that's how you read a book. Um, so if you have something up here that will direct your eye into the rest of the layout, um, it just helps your viewer know where to look next. And then we'll have some fun little words. Move them around a bit. I've got my journaling. Which I think I kind of want to put in the middle here somewhere. I'm okay with that going off the edge. I'm just, I'm not sure. This is quite a heavy, visually heavy, because it's it's different from all the others. The others um, are, you know, lighter colors. I mean, this, this is a bit heavier. And I do have some extra scraps, specifically from that one. So I could cut out another circle and bring it down just to um, help with the the, um, the balance. So right now it's not looking very balanced, but maybe if I bring some of that down here. Okay, I'm gonna kind of circle this out. And I can tuck it in there. And that helps. I've got three of that sort of darker toned paper with the wood grain and whatnot. And then, um, yeah, okay. I like the saying on this one. I like the size, kind of. 
be better if it was smaller. Um, but um, my issue, the issue that I'm having is that I don't like having the keeping it real and this this is real life and the struggle is real. It seems like there's too many reels. Um, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. So I think I might put this one aside and try and work it into another layout. I don't know if I'm super happy with the placement of that. I kind of like being able to see the clouds through there. And I also like having the circles on the outside as well, instead of confusing matters by having them in inside and outside. I think what I could do is something like that. Okay, I think I've got something here. I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna start sticking things down. That's the way I roll. If I decide later that I completely hate it, I'll just rip it all apart. It is just paper after all. Sometimes you just gotta be a little bit brave. Now I'm just trying to decide if I want it. It needs to be flush with the edge because it's got that cut off edge. Um, but I'm just trying to decide if I want it to come up from the bottom so there's a little bit of blue showing or if I want it flush to the bottom edge. And I think I like it up a little bit so I've got that blue and then it overlaps my frame as well and I like that. If you feel like things are floating on your layouts, they don't feel connected, then it could be as simple as physically connecting things, so overlapping things. Um, Sometimes I think there's a tendency to be afraid of, you know, maybe overcrowding things. Um, and what that actually does is it leaves it disconnected. So you've got you know, an element here, an element here, an element here, but they, there's nothing to bring them together. And so somebody looking at your layout has to wonder what they all mean. And you don't want anybody looking at your layout to, you know, have to sort of think too hard, I guess. <laughs> you want it to be enjoyable. You want it to be obvious what you're trying to say. straight as I can so I don't have some clouds that are perfectly horizontal and some that have decided to get a little drunk. So now I need um, I need a title although I think I'm just gonna stick with that as kind of my title. Um, I need some letter stickers to denote um, times of day and then I need to add my notes and I might add them in more places as well, but I definitely need to add some journaling there. And I have this um, as well that I can cut some circles out of and um, add some notes. I also really like the other side, which I didn't notice at first. So I might have to sort of cut that one out and use it. So I, I haven't cut into this one for that exact reason. And yeah, so I'll grab some letter stickers and we'll go from there. Okay, so I have got all my times down and I have used different um, colors and sizes of fonts and my thought process there was to spread the color around. So I had this one yellow um, circle over here and I had nothing else that was really yellow. So I added um, two spots of yellow um, alphabets over here. And then I've got some, I think these were Studio Calico. Just digging into my stash. And because I didn't have the semicolon in that font, I decided to go with like a 24 hour clock um, notation there. 
So I've got that in two places and then I added some up there. So I've got that in three places as well. And um, I've got two instances of sort of that tealy color. And then of course there's lots in the background. Um, and then there's the blue over here. So I just added the one blue tealy um, letter over here. Uh, alphabet over here and then I've got two instances of the black um, and there's other areas where black shows up so um, I'm, I'm happy with that. I added my journaling in two different spots and now it's time to add um, a few more little embellishments. I'm not going to add um, a ton to this. It's fairly visually busy but I need to add some different textures so I've got my apologies uh, my phone cut out and I didn't notice, so kind of missed um, a little bit of me talking about what embellishments I was going to use. And basically I wanted to use um, some round um, items just to accentuate all the circles that I have going already. So I have got three different flare badges on here. Really digging into my stash. This one is an old two-piece in a bucket one that shows how old it is. And then I have got um, two brads. This one has the days of the week. That was from the uh, Simple Stories Daily Grind. And this one has a clock and that's from an Echo Park summer line. And then I've added two of the sort of Brad stickers from the Carpe Diem line from Simple Stories. And then several enamel dots just scattered about. And that, my friends, is it. It's done. So like I said, come on over to my blog. Um, I will have a link to the cut file here and I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope that um, we you enjoy load this month. I think it's going to be a lot of fun digging into our everyday stories and I will see you on the message boards. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye-bye.